Having therefore, brethren, boldness, say boldness, boldness. to enter into the holiness, to his, the holiest by the blood of Jesus. You see, under the old covenant, they had a holy of holies, and they had to go, they had to sanctify, make it holy, so the Holy Spirit could dwell there. He'd come down like at times, and people would come for festivals and stuff to be in the presence of God. The Holy Spirit dwelt in buildings made with hands. But now in Jesus Christ, we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yes, thank you. Lord. Now the Holy Spirit dwells in us. Entering to the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way. See, a new and living way. Living See, it's way. only through Jesus we have a new and living way. We no longer have to go to temples made with hands. We could have church outside, but most people would like, on a cold day like this, would not like having church outside. But... If you're dedicated, you'd be willing to go. Yeah. Amen. By a new and living way by which he consecrated for us through the veil. Through the veil. Uh, the temple had a veil of the Holy of Holies. And the veil was rent in twain on the day that Jesus died. Yeah. We were taught in Bible college that the veil was like four to six inches thick. Yeah. It was so thick it could not be torn. But it was ripped in two from the top to the bottom when Jesus hung on the cross. And there was a great earthquake. And from that point on, the Holy Ghost never dwelled in temples made with hands, but now we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Praise your Father. Glory to God. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That is to say, his flesh and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. That literally means an evil moral consciousness. In other words, I used to just think I was an old sinner. Now in Christ, we need to understand we're not like that anymore. We've been delivered from that evil moral consciousness. Thank you, Jesus. We have to have full assurance. And our body is washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering. In other words, keep saying what the Word says. Believing what the Word says. No matter what you feel like, we walk by faith and not by sight while we look not at things which are seen, but things which are not seen. Yeah. For the things which are yeah. seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Yeah. Thank you. Let's hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. James says, if you waver, you're like a wave of the sea which is tossed. Let not that man that wavers think he shall receive anything from the Lord. So we need to stand fast with the Word of God and keep saying what the Word says. Let's consider one another to provoke unto love, agape, and to good works. We need to be walking in love with people and to good works. Say good works. Good good works. works. Not forsaking the assemblings of ourselves together so much more as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. That was we should encourage one another and so much more as we see the day approaching. We're seeing the day of, of Christ approaching. Amen. For if we sin willfully, if we, who said this? The Apostle Paul. If we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth. You know, there is willful sin as where I choose to sin. And then there's, there's non-willful sin, which I, I, I'm doing something wrong, but I don't really know it. But as soon as the Holy Spirit quickens me up to that, then I need to fix that. Because the Holy Spirit said to reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. But if I willfully choose to, to do that, that's a willful sin. For if we will, sin is of knowledge, to do good and to do it not to him it is sin. We, we have to know that we're doing wrong, but now we have the Holy Spirit in the world reproving the whole world of sin. I talked to a homosexual one time. He, he wanted to receive Christ, but he didn't want to truly repent. He didn't want to turn away from it, what he was doing. I said, you can't receive Christ unless you're willing to turn away from that stuff. He said, well, I'm, I'm, he said, he lived in San Francisco, and him and his, his lover, they were in a house together that they owned. And he said, he loved his lover more than he loved God. We have to love God above everything. If you're not willing to lay down your old life, then you can't come to Christ. Right. So I told him that. He said, well, they tell us out there we can do living like that, and we're okay with God. I pointed at his chest. I said, you know in your heart that's not right. I knew because the Holy Spirit had been dealing with him. That's why he came forward, to receive Christ. I mean, nobody else in the church even knew he was a homosexual. But the Lord, the, as soon as he walked forward, the Lord gave me a word of knowledge that he was a homosexual and he was coming forward because kids were laying hands on people. He was, his, perver his perversion. 
So I said, I said, you're homosexual, right? He said, yes, I am. I said, you came forward because you was getting excitement out of these kids laying hands on you, right? He said, that's exactly right. He admitted it. But if we'll, if we'll be sensitive to the voice of the Spirit, God will lead us. God will give us knowledge like that. It's, it's just the Lord, folks. That's right. But God's bigger than anything. Amen. He can give you these, these words of knowledge. And then he, he said he wanted to receive Christ. But he didn't want to lay down his old life. You cannot receive Christ unless you're willing to lay down your own old life. Right. If we're willing to lay down that old stuff, God's, God will set you free. Amen. He'll make you whole. But we've got to really be willing to lay down that old life. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. From our heart. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Deliverance. Hallelujah. If we sin willfully after we receive the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. But a certain, say certain, certain. fearful looking for us of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. In other words, we were a saint... But we chose to sin willfully to get into sin. I mean, that's like I, I'm married. The Bible says if, I'm the, if I get into adultery, if I commit adultery, that, that no adulterer will enter the kingdom of God. That's right. So I, decide, I make a decision to cheat on my wife. Here this woman's making eyes at me. That's why any time like, if some woman makes some kind of eyes at me, I go tell my wife. I tell I'm going to tell my wife. And I do. I tell my wife. Jesse DePlanta says, if you don't embarrass sin, sin will embarrass you. So like when some girl, some woman was making eyes at him, hitting on him in, on an airplane, he got up and he said, Whore of Babylon! To the whole, to the whole plane. <laughs> He said, if you don't embarrass sin, sin will embarrass you. And that's true. That's why I tell my wife. I mean, if some, some lady, ladies, if any of you start hitting on me, I'm telling you my wife's going to know. I, I had one time, this, this young lady, younger than me at least, she started rubbing on my hand whenever I shook her hand. I went and told my wife immediately. That girl is rubbing my hand. I did that right, Kevin? Right? So, so I want you to understand, this guy is taken, okay? I love my wife. I love the Lord. Praise you, Father. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. How much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who had trodden underfoot the Son of God. In other words, I was a child of God, but I, tro tro I had stepped all over the Son of God, hath counted the blood of the covenant, wherewith he was sanctified, wherewith he was made holy, an unholy thing, and had done despite to the Spirit of grace. For we know that he saith, Vengeance belongeth to me, saith the Lord. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. Is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. Amen. So if we're getting into sin, then it's a fearful thing because judgment's coming. Because yeah. the Holy Spirit's reproving the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. In other words, we immediately realize that we're away from God. I had one person who got into adultery that, that texted me or emailed me. They said, I just felt like God walked away from me. I said, God didn't walk away from you. I said, you walked away from God. Amen. But they knew they were lost. Amen. Come on. They, they knew God had left them. Because if we draw near to God, He draws near to us. But if we forsake God, He forsakes us. That's in the Bible. Amen. That's in the Bible. If we forsake God, He will forsake us. If we draw near to God, He'll draw near to us. If as long as we walk with God, He'll never, ever forsake us. But if we walk away from God, He'll walk away from us. If we forsake God, He will forsake us. That's in the Bible. Yeah, he denied, he denied too. Amen. Amen. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Turn me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45. I'm getting there. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45. 
And that's the Apostle Paul writing this. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, say first man, Adam, first man, Adam. was made a living soul. The second Adam, this is talking about Jesus, was made a quickening or reanimating spirit. This word quickening means, means reanimate you from the dead to life. Hallelujah. In other words, Jesus came to reanimate us from dead to life. So we're made alive in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Turn me to John chapter 20, verse 22. Now this is Jesus after he rose from the dead. The first thing he did after he rose from the dead, he went to his apostles. He went to his apostles. And he did this when he went to his apostles. Well, he showed them his hands. He showed them that he had risen from the dead. He showed them his hands. And his feet. And he said this, and he breathed on them. Jesus breathed on them. What did he breathe? His spirit into them. The spirit of life that was in Christ Jesus. He breathed it on them. Just like he did in the beginning with man. And he breathed on them. And they were born again at that time when he breathed on them. Amen. And then he said to them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. You see, now they were born again. Then they, he, he was commanding them to receive the Holy Ghost. But the Holy Spirit was not poured out yet. Because it wasn't poured out for 40 more days right. after Christ rose from the dead. So they, they were to tarry in Jerusalem until they may be endued with power from on high. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and dunamis power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And the same Holy Spirit that he was anointed with, he poured out upon all flesh. So believers could receive the Holy Ghost. They should receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. No other place he told he, Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Holy Spirit, which they, which do believe, should receive. Right. We should receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. When we, after we believe, after we receive Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath. This word breath literally means spirit. Of life, and man became a living soul. We're all souls, folks. We are spirit, soul, and body. We're either a living soul or a dead soul. In Christ, we're living souls. Without Christ, we're dead souls. We are souls. We're spirit, soul, and body. We're a three part being. God's a three part being. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We're a three part being. Spirit, soul, and body. If we, walk, if we walk after the Spirit, we have life. If we walk after the flesh, we have death. We're either a living soul if we walk after the Spirit or a dead soul if we walk after the flesh. Right. We get to choose. Amen. I am a soul. I get to choose whether I walk after the Spirit and walk in life or I walk after the Spirit and death, flesh and walk in death. I get to choose every day. God does not, God does not force us to do anything. We're free. He made us free. Free moral agents. Where we can choose to walk after the spirit or walk after the flesh. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. As for me and my house, we choose to serve the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Father. So the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath or spirit of life. And man became a living soul. In John chapter 1. Verse 1 says, in the beginning was the word, let's just look at that, John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And that's talking about Jesus. Amen. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made or created by him. Without him was not anything made that was made or created. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And light shined in the darkness. And the darkness comprehended him not. It goes on to say in verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So Jesus was the one who breathed the spirit of life into man. Into Adam and Eve. In the beginning. And then he went, once he rose from the dead. He went to his apostles. And he breathed his life. His spirit. 
into them. His spirit was joined to their spirit. Apostle Paul said in another place, he said, those that are joined to the Lord are one spirit. It's our union with Christ that makes us alive. We only have life through Jesus Christ. There is no eternal life outside of Jesus. We don't just all say, God says, you have eternal life. No. Now, when we're with G and Jesus and he's in us, then we have eternal life. We have, but we have to maintain our, our obedience to God. Turn me to, I guess that is not totally my end. Turn me to John chapter 15. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. John chapter 15. Thank you, Lord. Verse 1. I am the true, this is Jesus talking. He said, I am the true vine. And my father is the husband. And the husband was the one who tended the, the, to, to tended the great vines, who tended the, the gardens. Every branch that's in me, this in is that word that denotes a location. Every branch that's in me that beareth not fruit. Now, these are people that are in Christ that do not bear fruit. He taketh away. That's the Father. He taketh away. Every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it. In other words, he cuts off stuff that will help it grow more fruit. Yes. Has anybody ever trimmed, pruned trees and stuff? You prune the trees, yeah. they'll, they'll just have more stuff. Yeah. Yes. And better. And better, yeah. So don't, don't be upset when God's pruning some stuff off your life. Just let him do it. Amen. Say, Lord, Amen. break me, Lord. Help me to be yeah. who you'd have me to be. Yeah. 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 Then he'll be able to use you in mighty ways. Yeah. That it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide. Say abide. abide. One time as I was praying, the Lord spoke this to me. He said, abide means stay. So I looked it up. It's a Greek word, minnow. And abide means stay. So he said, stay in me. Yeah. Notice, we have a choice. Even after we come to Christ, we still have a choice every day. Every day is the day of salvation. Every day is the day of deliverance. Amen. The devil tries to pull you back to your old ways. Why? Because he's trying to destroy your life. Because yeah. he wants you to go to hell and not heaven. Mm -hmm. That's right. if, he, if you were, all of a sudden you came to Christ. If you were then forever saved, then the devil would just leave you alone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're lost to me now. Why does the devil keep trying to pull you back? Because he knows that if you get into sin willfully, that you're going to be lost. Amen. That, you'll, that you will be in deep trouble. There's a certain fearful looking for us of judgment against the adversary. All of a sudden, we become an adversary to God. That's not a good thing. Nope. Yeah. Because we've treading underfoot the blood of Christ wherewith we were made holy. Yeah. Right. We've done despite to the spirit of grace. So we need to encourage one another to do good, to do what's right, Amen. to walk in love. Yes. That's why we need to be in church all the time, Amen. as much as possible. Yeah. We may, I sure miss church Wednesday night, because I like being in church. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself to accept it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide or stay. In me, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If we'll stay in Christ, he'll stay in us. And we can bear much fruit. Amen. Because without him, we can't do anything. Amen. But through him, we can do all things through Christ Amen. who strengthens us. Thank you, Lord. But we've got to stay. We've got to, we need to stay in Christ. Amen. We need to keep walking in Christ. Keep our eyes focused on the Lord. Yeah. If we, do, if we don't, we get our eyes off the Lord and on circumstances, we'll begin to sink. Right. We'll begin to sink. If we'll keep our eyes on the Lord, then we'll be able to stand strong. He will enable us to be, do mighty things. He'll enable us to do things we can't do. He will quicken or make alive our mortal bodies in Christ Jesus. God will do that. Amen. He's mighty God. Yes, he is. That's my message. Thank Praise you, Father. Thank, Thank you. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve.